Um, I'm Susan Lyons and I'm the president of Design Techs. Uh, we are a design and manufacturer of high performance supplied materials for the built environment like textiles, wall covering, flexible films, printed films, um, designed and uh, manufactured for interior application. So I have been invited by Design Milk to talk about the future, um, which I appreciate. But I have to say, uh, after being in uh, sheltering in place lockdown for the last four weeks, it's hard to imagine the future. I'm actually spending most of my days um, very much in the present, which is funny because um, as much as I struggle, have struggled in the past to think about mindfulness and about being in the present now, um, I find that I am forced to be so, so maybe that's a good thing. Um, what will happen next? It's hard to know. Um, what will our industry, what will happen to our industry? What's the future of this and what's the future of that? I have no idea. I have no idea what will happen tomorrow. Uh, every day I turn on the news and I uh, watch to see when we might be out of uh, isolation, when we might be out of sheltering in place. Uh, it seems in New York City anyway where I'm located that it's going to be another six weeks or so. So it's hard to imagine what normal looks like. The one thing that we've been thinking a lot about is what does safety look like in the future because what this global pandemic has done is it has made us very much concerned about safety. Uh, safety of our colleagues, safety of our loved ones, safety of uh, our systems, our infrastructure, our businesses, all of those things um, have become uh, very important. At first, when I was asked to do this, I thought I would be talking about the future of sustainability, um, which is a topic that I've been passionate about and interested in for the last 25 years. But now it seems like it just comes down to what does safety look like and feel like. Ironically, in a way, that's what the whole movement towards sustainability and the green movement, if you want to call it that, was about, which was to say, how can we make our products and our systems, uh, how can we design our products and our systems in such a way that they would be safe for people, for the planet, so that as we are developing products and systems to support them, that they would be smart and they would be uh, mindful of the resources that we have on the planet, but also designed in a way so that their uh, chemistry was safe for users, etc. The thing that's funny about the situation we find ourselves in now is after the last 25 years when we've made so much progress around chemical safety of products and what we put in them and how we make them and how we can optimize them for human health and environmental health, now basically the question is, how can I make this product or this surface uh, feel uh, enabled to kill viruses and microbes? So as someone who's been involved in this for a long time, it's a, it's a dilemma because um, We've spent all these many, many years trying to take the chemistry, as much chemistry out of the product, and now we find ourselves in a situation where people are looking for more chemistry to feel more safe. So the idea that somehow you can add a, a chemical layer to a product that's going to kill this virus has become a very huge conversation. Um, and the whole notion of cleaning and disinfection, of course, is important because uh, having been involved in the making materials for healthcare for many, many decades, um, our company is very focused on that. Like, how do you develop products for healthcare 
that could both be cleaned and disinfected and not disintegrate over time because disinfectants are not your friend as any of you who are probably washing your hands and cleaning your spaces day in and day out because of this pandemic you know that um, these materials and these chemicals are, are tough on materials and tough on um, <laughs> tough on your hands as an example so that's uh, what I think is for me the design assignment here is to say uh, how can we make our products cleanable, safe, disinfectable, disinfectable, if that's a word, and, and still um, beautiful and poetic and uh, not uh, degrading the materials, not hurting the user, not uh, where the chemistry is not actually um, a negative. So the funny thing to me is now after 25 years of trying to optimize the health and safety of chemistry in our products, we now have circled back around where we're having to add chemistry to make people feel confident that the products can be safe and clean and disinfectable. So I think, who is it that said, don't let a good crisis go to waste? Maybe that's our design assignment, which is to say, we need to make all the products going forward that we produce uh, able to be protected and actively protected from uh, viruses and things like that, but also safe for human consumption. Today that doesn't really exist. There are no antimicrobials that are going to kill coronavirus. Um, and I, you know, I don't know how far off that may be, but um, maybe there's a way to figure it out. And I think it's going to be a partnership between material manufacturers and disinfectant producers. Maybe this is the moment where all these different industries come together and try to figure it out in a meaningful way. Um, I, hope, I hope that's what happens after all of this. That would be a good outcome. Thank you.